So I want to welcome our very special guest today, um, RJ Mitty, um, most well known for the role of Walt Jr. in the hit show Breaking Bad. How are you today, RJ? I'm doing great, man. Another, another day in the life. So, so you know, the, the first question I got to ask you is, um, did you get breakfast today? Did I have breakfast today? Uh, I, I had a cup of black coffee, and uh, I, I was actually in the middle of building like a, a table, like this I, kind of a uh, crawfish table. I don't know if you know what that means, hmm. but like it's it's a long table and it has a hole in the middle. So you pull you pour the crawfish out. But anyways, I was busy building that, and my breakfast was a cup of black coffee, and then followed with some <laughs> lunch of a chicken salad sandwich. Excellent. But uh, but more breakfast tomorrow. There we go. You got <laughs> you got to start the day off right, right? Got to do it. So, uh, how are you holding up during this whole pandemic? You've been keeping yourself busy and safe. I mean, yeah, as, as safe as you can be um, in a global pandemic. <laughs> but uh, I, I'm I'm always busy. You know, for me, I, I do a lot of philanthropic work. Um, I I work with different organizations that are still working. A lot of the stuff that I do is still just because we're in the lockdown and that this pandemic is happening doesn't mean uh, people don't need help. People don't need awareness. People people now need that more than ever. Um, so really for me, not so much acting wise, but a lot of my professionalism, a lot of, of my philanthropic life um, is is 200% going um, and moving in the directions um, that that kind of been needing to happen you know I, I believe that this is a sign that we have set the bar now so low when it comes to uh of health how we view each other how, how the health system views us and how we view the health system and and how small businesses and large businesses aren't meeting the necessary requirements they need to make a sustainable and healthy environment um, so I've been working with numerous different organizations and, and states and government uh, to make, to kind of make these changes and implement policy that, that actually governs and protects people that, that we've needed for a very long time. But I'm sad to see and happy to see it's now. It's a change is now. And, and it sadly took a global pandemic to make make it uh happen and you know there's a lot of good happening and there's a lot of negative happening so i'm just hoping that we can offset what's happening with the positivity and hope and understanding and awareness and you know knowledge is power and the more knowledge we have uh the, the stronger we are as individuals as communities as states and governments and i think it's it's been time for a change yeah, it's a long overdue. It's it's really kind of disturbing it, how quickly um, the shortcomings of our society have become evident during this. I mean, it, it this is a, a pandemic, but it it could be so much worse, and we're already failing miserably. Yeah. Um, well, I think I think we're we are making great strides in certain areas, but I think we're not failing because we never implemented them we don't we don't have this level of service that that we, we've never met the requirement if you go into certain businesses across the board you know there there's there's things that they excel at and things that they they so much decline at it's always been that it's always been that one that that fluctuates of 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 uh, status you know what i mean of like this is what we need for health and safety. Yep. But this is what we do. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> and it's not good. And we are, we were kind of coasting by and, and now um, I, I think you get a real opportunity and, and hopefully people are, are more open to listening right now. Cause I, I think so. You know, when you threaten their life with something that's not you, that they listen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and we know, I, I think people are beginning to understand that we're not going to go back to the way it was. So let's not. Let's use this opportunity to, to do it right. Yeah. Yep. Well, it, it's like let's, let's create healthy habits. You know, it takes 30 days to make a habit. It takes twice as long to break it. And we've been in that and we've, we've developed bad habits when it comes to 
to our lifestyles. And, and, and not saying that every bad habit is something is, – is, is like smoking. Smoking is a bad habit, but you know what? We're not, I'm not damning you if you smoke. It's not one of those things. But how we smoke, what we smoke, what, what's, what's being into – I'm using it as smoking as a metaphor for how we take care of ourselves to what we turn into, to our environment, because it affects both a smoke. And that in itself, we, we pay very little attention to. So now with this kind of virus that, that affects distanced and internal, raising that status, I'm very happy to see positive growth in that. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Glad we got people that are, are using their voice and speaking up now. That's, that's great to see. It's important. Yeah. And you got guys like us, chuckleheads, who use this time to harass um, celebrities until somebody <laughs> says, okay, we'll be on your show. No, so. there's no worries. And, and that's why I'm here. It's, it's because I, I and, that, and, and that's why you harass is to get these kind of conversations going and, and to share this information and to really just to inspire people because we need entertainment. Y'all guys provide entertainment. You're providing content and you're inspiring people and, and setting trends and showing people things that they may not know without you. And that's key for, for what we do in the entertainment business. Yeah, we try, try to shine a light on something a little different, um, which kind of segues, a, segues us into to why we bothered you today. Um, one of the things on our show, um, we're, we're called Esoterica, and we like to um, discuss offbeat, unusual, obscure music. Um, so we put the request out to, um, we're, we're calling this our famous folk series, um, <laughs> to come on our show as a guest, um, you know, and talk about maybe an album that you like, um, yeah. some, what your jams are. Cause I know we were, uh, we were talking earlier. Um, I'm not a celebrity by any means, but I understand that when you're a celebrity, you try to keep your personal life and your, your professional life separate, but fans, they want to know everything about you. Music's a great way. Music is something that's very yeah. personal, but also wonderful to share. Mm. So uh, with, with that said, um, you shared yeah. an album with us. Uh, so I did. Um, Want to tell us what, about Atmosphere? What 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 did you think? What, tell me what you think of Atmosphere. Well, um, you want to? No, no. Okay, go so uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna go after you. Follow. <laughs> um, so I I don't usually listen to hip hop other than the um, you know I'm sort of old school. I like Beastie Boys. Yeah, um, but uh, I really enjoyed listening to it. Um, you, you mentioned uh, it's it's like that chill pop. So it's um, it did. It was funky, but it was kind of chill. I could just put it on and and enjoy it. Yeah, uh, I had never heard of Atmosphere before, so mm. this this was new to me. It, you know what it kind of reminded me of was the uh, uh, the mu the soundtrack to uh, Office Space that movie. Um, <laughs> it, I mean, not not quite the same, but I was getting <laughs> no, that. I get I, it. Yeah, I, it was. I enjoyed that for that reason. Yeah, uh, you know. For for people that don't know Ab Atmosphere, he's a rapper. He kind of has this um, sp spoken word, like, vibe, beat, where it's, it's kind of like, it, it's some of it's inspirational, some of it's kind of goes emotional, it, and, and it's all kind of, for me, um, it like, that type of rap, that type of rock, I feel, is something that really resonates with a lot of people for, like, for or just how they are in their daily life. And, and I think um, having a good flow is everything. Like atmosphere, when y'all were asking for albums, I mentioned a couple, but but I'm happy that, that y'all gravitated towards this one because it just has this vibe where you can put it on in the background and it puts you in a good mood. It's yeah, like, yeah. It's, it's not like hardcore gangster rap. It's <laughs> this rap where the lyrics make sense and it takes you through a story and a genre and it's like you you can hear it and you're like i like that i like that i can jam to this yeah you know uh and you say in spoken word too this this episode actually hasn't come out yet by the time this episode will come out i think next week is when we're planning on posting it but uh we did uh one about hobo johnson i don't know if you've ever heard of hobo johnson okay I've heard, i know hobo johnson yeah yeah a lot of that that spoken word kind of thing is that's uh i was i can see that now the kind of the relation um between that i don't know if my words made sense kind of yeah, yeah. Back, but, no. but hobo johnson a little bit no, they know. do they do make sense you know it, 
it, you know, it, it's interesting because, you know, right now we're in a time of music where it's cram, cram this, cram these residual words in. Let's say, let's say get it five times in a row and they'll get it. <laughs> like, <laughs> it it's, it's a weird time for, for artistry and, and especially in the, the music industry of what, people are listening to and they're listening to a lot of repetition but i feel a lot of these artists are, are missing the longevity of the song and they're going for the bite hmm. and they're and they're trying to get that hook and and hook you quick and keep hooking you and hooking you and hooking you but like anything if you keep hooking them eventually you're gonna pull the hook out of their mouth yeah <laughs> Some substance right yeah you need the substance you need the heart and and i find um atmosphere pulls a lot of heart into what he says and artists like him that that kind of in this almost traditional hip-hop i guess i would say of like this storytelling format of of like an average day in the life like nwa a great example like of how they were taught they would talk about just the average days of their life of just start trying to live you know and and I feel people people miss now the five minute track. Like people yeah. are missing missing the four minute of a story versus the, the, the minute and a half or two minute snippet that a lot of the people are getting now. Right. Yeah. You know, it's funny you mentioned NWA because um, I, I have a similar feeling with country music. Like I love Hank Williams. Yeah. And Hank Williams was the original punk. Like what he was singing about was shit that was happening to him. Yeah. And from that, you have this whole genre of music where it's a cliche to talk about your pickup truck and your wife losing you. But when it originated, like those people were talking about their day. Yeah. yeah. Just like, I mean, NWA spawned a whole gangster rap thing. And yeah. Well, this, this was the thing. And I, I feel like art, the artistry now is a little different than the artistry then because now there's so many people that are either one copying that that theme or you have people that actually live that theme and the people that live that theme they do very well and and some of the people that copy that theme do very well as well but you can hear the the sincerity in their voice of who they're singing about or who they're who that that beats for and the emotional level for me i'm a big believer in emotional constructing of scenes so on the entertainment side acting side if you have no emotion, why do I care? I, yeah. I can I can put great beats behind something all day long. I could go there's there's hundreds of millions of people that make beats every day that are just mind blowing and you can get some of the best artistry and pull it together. But if my lyrics have no heart or no no story that drives that beat, you don't feel it. You don't yeah. and, and you might listen to it. But it's not going to be a, a tw around for 20 years. It's not going to be around for the next decades. You know, there's a reason why certain songs hold up. There's a reason why Johnny Cash and Elvis Presley and all these, all these artists that, that have pulled these hearts of songs together that, that really make that difference and that are pioneers of an industry. It's like even Mozart, for example, he doesn't have words in it. But you can you he takes you through a story of 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 ups and downs that you can relate to that you that you can feel and and he didn't need words he yeah. just did that I just flowed you get that emotional connect you can't fake that emotional connection yeah. can't can't you, you can try to, yeah, <laughs> yeah you can try you listen to songs like <laughs> Bohemian Rhapsody like that song's been popular yeah. for fifty years now Amazing. you know what I mean. And it's it's it, because it's it's heartful and it tells a story. Yeah. The and, Beatles, and, exactly. and like yes. And, and at the end of the day, you see interpretations, like you know what I mean. You see the interpretation of those songs that that, that continue. But at the mm -hmm. end of the day, it's still that core value that brings you right back to them. Yeah. So no matter how someone takes that sound, it's still Bohemian Rhapsody. It's still these entities that are are like Jaws, for example, mm -hmm. one of the most iconic 
iconic sounds in, in cinematic history, and it's two notes, yeah. which you know. <laughs> yeah. You hear that? You know you're in trouble. And you know what? I'll, I'll say yeah. I've seen the same thing with your acting. Like, if, if you look at your role on Breaking Bad, that character could have just been Walt's disabled son. And that, like, I don't want to say a one note character, but not as much depth. But what you yeah. brought to that character, you're the humanity in that family. And um, you really, I know, I emotionally connected with your character. Um, seeing what he was going through and that this was a real actual person with CP. Um, I, I have to ask, was, was that difficult for you to, to exaggerate your own condition for that role? Man, I, I just stay up a little late and don't take my medication. <laughs> <laughs> He's nah. not an actor. <laughs> no, nah, no, nah, no. Nah. Uh, you know, it's, it's different. Uh, and, and for the most part, when it came to the exaggeration, I let my crutches that Wall Jr. used be a big part of the exaggeration because I d they saw themselves at the time you didn't really have characters in the forefront with disabilities that had had crutches or chairs or whatever that may be so for me a big part of creating Walt Jr. wasn't so much creating Walt Jr. as it was is using the crutches with authenticity making sure I did put my full weight on those crutches that I did I, I did use them them. And that in itself altered my body, in a sense, if you understand it. It altered my positioning of how I talked and how I walked and how I would I would pose initially. How, when I would hit my mark, how I would use my crutch to hold it or to, to move it. And to, to any actors that are watching this and, and anyone that's in the industry, you know, having a prop is, is something that is a very um, unique skill. Because anyone can hold anything. But if you hold it, you're talking with it, you don't care. But if I hold it and I show you it, you see the extension of, your, uh, of it to that person. It becomes one with you. Mm -hmm. And that alters your environment. And that is something that is relatable and alters that character's environment in the real world. So that, that really helps you build that. But at the same time, not letting a prop overshadow you. And because if I, because as you saw, I was waving it around. It, it, it blocked me. It blocked it. You watch, you watch the, the remote flare. And, and at the same time, it takes away from me. But if I can harness it and you can utilize it, it, it it's all one thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I think, and, and, and you're absolutely right with what you brought to that character. I know, like, when I think back to the show, I don't think of Walt's son with cerebral palsy. I think of Walt Jr. or Flynn. Like, that's a yeah. fully formed character. You think character. of Walt's son. You, yeah. You, you, yeah. Don't, you don't see, it, it, it's not a, it's not, a, it's, it's a person. You don't see a disabled, like, more often than not, if you're not used to it, it looks abnormal to you. Mm -hmm. And if you see it every other day, and every day, eventually, you know what you see? You just see that person. You don't yeah, see yeah. It, uh, that, that person that walks with a limp or that person that, that walks with crutches or a wheelchair, whatever they may use. You're like, oh, that's – oh, that it was – it turned from disabled George to the – oh, that's just George. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what we remember the most about your character is your obsession with breakfast. Like, that's so – that's yep. what you brought to the table. <laughs> that's awesome. Um I'll have to share with you while we were sitting here um, waiting to talk with you. We, uh, since we were listening to hip hop, um, we pulled up the Wu Tang name generator. Yeah. Uh, you are Menace Loco. Menace Loco. I feel that. <laughs> I, could, I could get with that. Menace Loco. <laughs> funny, funny, funny. I, I'm actually a friend of mine is engraving something. I I just got a big gumbo spoon, um, or a, a crawfish spoon, and they're um they're engraving local midi <laughs> on it. <laughs> um, funny, 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 funny. I <laughs> that's wild. I I'm just. I was just thinking of something where so one of my one of my friends one 
Never mind. Anyways, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> I, li- I like Darth Vader in the background. There we go. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're a couple of big nerds over here. Well, at least yeah. I- nothing wrong with that. Don't, don't take all the thunder. <laughs> hey, I got a lightsaber in my corner right here. Don't even worry. Excellent. Yeah, and I saw Heisenberg in the background earlier. So. Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh, he's good. Nice. Yeah. Like- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's funny. We're actually um, not, not to plug our shamelessly plug our show, but we're um, we're talking to Charles Do Baker, it. Skinny Pete. Um, oh, on awesome! Friday. And we just he's talked, awesome. We just talked to uh, Dave Yuri, uh, who played Spooge, um, just before we talked mm-hmm. to you today. Oh, awesome! How is he doing? Uh, he's doing good. He's been doing um, some stand up, and um, I know Charles has a new show that's out on uh, mm-hmm. Amazon Prime right now. <laughs> Oh, movie, yeah. Sorry, yeah. he's got a movie. I think we 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 thought it was a show. We turned out it was a movie. <laughs> yeah. it was a movie. <laughs> so <breaking laughs> that's, how, that's how it works. <laughs> you guys are talking to us. We appreciate it. No. Um. So you're you're. Well, thank y'all for for talking with us. Um. So you were in the middle of filming something when uh, yeah. this whole pandemic went down. Um, yeah. Uh, well, I I was. I was supposed to come back in April for some more shooting, but I was working on a film with um, Dove Cameron and some other amazing actresses and actors, and we uh, we shot 30% of it. It's a film called Isaac, um, and it, it's cool. It's like a, I, I wouldn't say supernatural thriller, but it's kind of a supernatural thriller. <laughs> um, it's got this, this, these airs of like, you almost augmented reality of, of kind of what this guy's going through. And um, he's 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 mentally a little a little messed up, but at the same time he's a he's a caring person and and kind of dealt with a lot of trauma. And there's like there's kind of this this whole grief process of 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 mental health that that surrounds this character of of him growing through these journeys and it, it's cool but it's it's made it a little difficult with this pandemic um to to get that type of work because we need so many people on set it's not really we're not we're not in the position um to implement policies to actually protect people well enough to get people back into the workforce and uh and i'm i'm really working and hoping to see we we are able to change that because when it comes to what we do in the entertainment industry, we can implement policies um, in our own way to to protect people. You know, closed sets are a big thing, and and I think it's when when we finally step into an ability to to be able to lock down a set and to isolate and quarantine the set itself, we can get back to work. And I'm really hoping to see more of that soon. Yeah, yeah, and I'm I'm almost almost curious as to um, how how this period of time is going to be reflected going forward in the film industry because it's a i look at it like a recession yeah or I, this, like maybe the writer's strike like it's an event that happened but how do you how do how you, you quantify it how do you how do you how do you well i think now it's very different of how we can quantify what is happening in our industry because we have stuff like this we're dealing with online we're dealing with live and streaming and direct streaming and before it was your television and that's all you had now we have all these media outlets and platforms that we can we can utilize better and for me i look at this as you know we've been waiting for a recession to happen we've been we've been hearing about it for for the last couple of years now on on what's happening to the market what's doing this but internally in the entertainment industry i've been a big believer for a long time it's it's been overvalued it's been overstaffed, it's been underemployed, and the market value is is always been degrading for a lot of people. Um, and I think now we're in a position to give and get, not just in our industry, but, but all industries, accurate numbers, proper healthcare, proper environment, where we can grow healthy artists, where we can grow healthy businesses, and and implement you know breaking bad breaking bad lived through the writer strike it lived through the swine flu epidemic it lived through all these things how did how did we handle that before to how do we handle that now and we have more technology but we can't handle it 
what what does that say about our organizations and, yeah. and people people are afraid you know we we need more more leadership that that doesn't bark but we need them to bite and i think it's going to be positive in the years to come right now it's not positive people are dying people are dying people are losing their businesses people are losing their homes people don't have some don't have anything some are barely hanging on some are filing a lot of people are filing for unemployment a lot of artists are filing for unemployment um i feel we're in a position now to look at this as a whole and go what did we do wrong where can we implement procedures to protect our artists to look at new media to look at these platforms and hold them accountable and say look you've been taking all this content but you're not paying these people now these people don't have any content and they just lost their home and all their gear got repossessed so they can't make you any more content they can't give you what you want I'm going to fix that and they go well we'll just find someone new well yeah, the, no. you just cast someone away you can't do that no, like, that's not that's not right we need sustainable and 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 it's and this is the thing is what's sustainable for me might not be sustainable for you and what's sustainable for you might not be sustainable for someone else and how can we make it a malleable market in an industry that is obtainable that utilizes all of our resources and aspects properly and right now we can do that because everyone's at home everyone's having to take a hard look at who they are and how they live mm -hmm. and and really if you if you want and this is a decision and this is an individual decision if you want to make it better you have to do it and you have to follow certain procedures it's like cleaning your room if you if and, and look my room is a bit of a wreck my bed's not even made <laughs> like, like I got, I got clutter. I got stuff. But at the end of the day, I, I find my organized chaos. Yeah. But I still have my, my implementation of I need to do this, or I'm going to end up with piles of shit everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> and, and there is opportunities here. I mean, I can say just, just the two of us. We've been doing this podcast for a few months now. We've got um, an average of thirteen listeners, and. Aaron and I were talking, joking around like a couple of months ago about, hey, we should try to get like celebrities on the show. Pandemic comes around. And so if you told me two months ago that on a Wednesday, I'd be sitting here talking to RJ um, in my house, I would have told you you were crazy. And here we are. So yeah. it's doable. Everything. And, and this is one thing that I'm a big believer in. And, and you know, I, I don't, I'm very bad at following my own advice, <laughs> but, um, but you know, we, we choose to lead and we choose to follow. And if you, and at the end of the day, if you want to get to the president, you can get to the president. When well, uh, years and years and years ago, my great grandfather had an issue um, with, with a family friend who was, who was initially, um, I, I can't remember. She was, she was married to this man and eventually something happened with her visa and she's getting, she's getting deported and this was probably in the 80s or 70s my great-grandfather called the president called the office and actually got the president on the phone you can do that as a citizen you have those rights to call the white house to call your congressman to call your senators but we don't why don't we we don't believe we hold that power we don't believe that we are leaders in our community we believe that we have to follow those community leaders that we can't be them but you choose not to be them you choose not to to create a podcast and get celebrities and talk about the things that you like and bring those awarenesses that can happen in a month that can happen in three months it doesn't it does and it, and it starts with one follower it starts with a and, and not even it starts with zero followers actually <laughs> yeah. you gotta make it you gotta you gotta yeah. make it but, but you got to be able to stay with it and consistent and put yourself out there and say, hey, this is me. This is who I am. Take it or leave it. This is my voice, and I have a voice. So show it. 
Mm. You weren't by any chance in Boy Scouts when you were young, were you? I I was in I was in Boy Scouts for one week. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was, we're we're both scout leaders, um, so and, and Aaron's an Eagle Scout. So just, all right, cool. Hearing that talk about leadership is that something that we're very focused on um, as as adult leaders trying to yeah. instill that in youth. So it's it's always yeah. good to hear someone championing that. My my grandfather um, was a Marine, and a lot of my family was all oil field workers um ranchers farmers so it was kind of i always grew up with the mentality of you want it done wake up and do it mm -hmm. you want you want to build something wake up and go build it because you're only limited by you sitting on your ass yeah yeah <laughs> that's true that's very true. true and there's enough of that um, I should also mention, um, before we wrap this up, that uh, you just completed a movie with Terrence Howard, too, right? I uh, did. I did. Very happy for that. I've been wor working on this. It's called Triumph. Um, I've been working on it for about four years now, five years now. Um, we we got Terrence Howard, Grace Victoria Cox, Col Colton Haynes. Um, it's all I, – I, I hate – this word but it's a heartwarming film uh, <laughs> heartwarming heartwarming <laughs> but um but it, I'm, I'm very happy to see it's made um we've been working on it for a while it's been labor of love but we just finished it we're in the middle of shopping it we have um a buy a, a buying and selling a seller's meeting on uh this weekend it's it's i'm i'm just so happy to see this this work go you know, the film um, had some hiccups a couple of years ago with one of our producers, which was removed. Um, and and we were able to pull it up by its bootstraps and, and really get it moving forward. And I'm just happy to have the content. I'm happy to have, have it done and, and be able to present it. Um, I have another movie that, that came out this past year called uh, Standing Up for Sunny as well. Um, it's an Australian-based film. Uh, it's on iTunes and all that. I don't know if you saw um, on Stars. I have another show called Now Apocalypse that I'm a part of. If you okay. want, if if you like, if you like funky, sexy, wild, wild stars, that's Now Apocalypse. Now, have you ever seen Kaboom? Kaboom. I have heard of Kaboom. I, I haven't seen it. It's an older show. No, uh, um, you would have seen it. <laughs> you, you, you look like a guy that would have seen it. <laughs> you white hair, is it? Yeah. Um, but uh, <laughs> the guy that wrote that, he created this show, and it, it's funky and cool. And um, I have another one called Carol the Bells. It's a movie. It's out now as well. Um, I, I was very lucky actually for the last like the last couple of years. Uh, Last year, I, I didn't have any movies come out. And, like, this year I have three that came out. And I'm working on three more. And it was – I was kind of in a lull of, like, I have no content. I ha I, I, I shot this show uh, called Now Apocalypse. I, I always will have Breaking Bad. And I was just kind of like, what am I going to do now? And I'm like, I'm so happy now that these shows are coming out because I can't do the work. There's no work to be done um, safely in yeah. the entertainment industry other than live stuff and personally i'm not a big live ever mm. I, I i it's hard it's hard for me there's there's people messaging and it's just like yeah. overwhelming and anxiety and i'm just like i, I don't want to say anything wrong because <laughs> like, because then it's used against you it's forever they yeah, say, right. So yeah. like it's like it, it's a weird factor, but um, but I'm very happy that, that I had this content and that that we've been making these sh shows over the last couple of years, um, and they're they're coming to fruition and they're coming out and in a time where people need need work and a lot of my work is is kind of I I I don't want to say positive, but but has a lot of positive themes in it and a lot of hard hitting themes that that I feel people relate to more often than want to watch and now i think they're in a position where they're like you know what i want to watch that show i want to watch something that like matches my emotional level of what i'm going through now yeah. and, I, and i think that's a big factor but you, you, you you're genuine you know you're you're og <laughs> so 
Depends on the day. <laughs> <laughs> so it, you, it sounds like you're staying busy. Um, Very much so. You get a lot. And hopefully, you know, um, hopefully this situation will start turning around before too long. You know, I, I think people just need to keep in mind that this virus has been around for a very long time. It's like any other. It's like any other virus in our system. It's like any other virus that we come in contact with every day. The difference is, is the virus has grown stronger, and so we have to go grow stronger, and we have to be able to protect the people that we need to protect to give, give that extra hand to 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 put people in an environment that is fun. Back to back to your your considered norm, and and. Be, be able to have you in a safe and clean environment. And I, I'm, I'm sad at the same time. I'm very happy and eager to see what happens because only positive, you know, with great tragedy usually comes great, great peace, great happiness. You know, it's, yeah. it's a weird, it's a weird thing um, that we've seen in our species, the human cycle of, of, of great rise to power and then great destruction and then equally twice that grow to be that pillar of, of power again. And we have that inside all of us. And I think it's, it's, we need people to, to realize that more so. Yeah. Mm. We need more champions of humanity. That's, that's the <laughs> We're key. trying. Awesome. That's, that's the name of the game. RJ, you are absolutely awesome. Um, yeah. I want to thank you so much for taking the time today to chat with us. We really appreciate it. Yes, thank you so much. My pleasure. My pleasure, guys. Um, we are going to drop this episode, I think, next Friday. Um, so I'll shoot your people an email um, when cool. it goes live. And um, hey, stay busy, stay healthy, and uh, keep yeah. doing your thing, man. We look We're forward doing to it. it. We're doing it, yeah. Hey, enjoy your conversation with Charlie. He's dope. I like Charlie a lot. Um, yeah, so good, we're looking good. forward to that. He's yeah. a good man. He's a real good man. He's going to have a hard time topping this, though. So <laughs> uh, he, he tops it in his own regard. So. <laughs> All right, RJ. All right, guys. Cool, man. Have Thanks a good day. Thanks so much. Bye. Bye.